The diagram below shows the distribution of different fox species. Now, we have the Arctic fox, okay, and so the Arctic fox, this is the little white guy here, and clearly Arctic, it is in the snow, it is we're near the Arctic, and it's very cold, so it's going to have nice thick fur and it's going to be white because it has to tone in with the snow. Okay, so it can't be seen. Then, it's largely distributed in the northern hemisphere near the Arctic, because the Arctic is up here. And then the grey fox is in the southern hemisphere. So the grey fox is down here. And what a cute little fox we have. All right, now, you can see that they started off here and then they went to Asia and then they went here. But what do we find? Mainly Arctic foxes over here. What this shows us, all right, is your biogeography. Okay, and biogeography, the whole thing is the fact that the whole earth, all the land masses, were one big massive continent called Pangaea. And then because of continental drift and the shifting of the tectonic plates, we then ended up with what we have is Africa, our little homeland here, and we've got Europe and we have Asia and we have Australia and the North, uh, North America and South America. All right, people, and I'm not sure why we aren't, okay, there we go. So here's North America, there's South America, and they all moved because of continental drift. Now, if you get a question where they give you a diagram like this, whether it's camels, whether it is flightless birds, whether it is tortoises with, with, with whatever, okay, cabbages, it doesn't matter. The way I'm going to show you to answer the question, I'm going to make it apply to the foxes, but it can apply to any animal that they give you, all right? So please pay attention because it doesn't matter what animal they show you, the principle is going to be the same. So describe evidence um, for evolution shown in this diagram. I've already told you it is bio geography okay which shows present day or current day distribution showing you where these animals are distributed so distribution of species in this case it's going to be species of foxes but it could be camels, it could be whatever animal they use, okay, that originated from a common ancestor. So depending on what organism they give you, you're going to write that in here. Okay, now... It says, describe the process that resulted in the evolution of the different species of foxes. It could be the different species of horses, lions, cheetahs, ostriches, whatever. It's going to be the same. Oh, hang on. Something else I want to just put here is remember, biogeography is one form of evidence. What are the different types of evidence that we have? And why am I telling you this? Because it is NB. Okay, evidence. Okay, so your types of evidence. We have biogeographies, number one. Then we have number two would be genetic evidence. Number three would be fossil evidence. Number four would be cultural evidence. Uh, cultural. Um, number five would be uh, modification by descent. Okay, so that's when you have, um, we have arms, a horse has front legs, um, a bat has wings, um, a chicken has wings that are flightless. So those are modification by descent. So genetic, fossil and cultural, this would apply to um, our hominid process. Genetic, fossil, cultural. But for animals, we look at biogeography and we look at modification by descent as well. You must know your types of evidence, people. Alrighty, righty, here we go. Where am I now? 
Okay, describe the process that resulted in the evolution of the different foxes, spe species of fox. Okay, it could be any species. So we're looking at speciation. And this is how you're going to answer any question on speciation. Number one, um, the pop population separated, write this down guys, by geographical barrier. Okay, that's point one. Doesn't matter what species it is. Number two, can no longer interbreed. Therefore, there is no gene flow. So the genes are no longer mixing between the populations, okay? Number three, pops are exposed. So remember they're on the different sides of the geographical barrier. Exposed to um, different environmental, I suppose I may as well write it out, conditions. Okay, so they're exposed to different environmental conditions. They can no longer interbreed, so there is no gene flow, and there's a geographical barrier. Number four, you have to say, because they have different environments, natural selection takes place or occurs independently within each pop, okay, but when, there, so we have natural selection, and I'm going to need just a little bit more time, we have number five, so the pops, so both of them, both populations, become genotypically and phenotypically so the genes and the physical appearance, all right, genotypically and phenotypically different over time. Okay, so natural selection occurs independently within each population. The populations become genotypically and phenotypically different over time. Number six, when... They mix again, unable to interbreed and produce fertile offspring. Number seven, therefore the original pop has become two different species. Okay, so this year, when they mix again, they're unable to interbreed and produce fertile offspring. They've now become different species. So just remember, remember last week when we did the, the dogs? And one of the questions was, why are dogs the same species? Why? They're the same species because they can inter... Even though they look different, they can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. If I have a horse and a donkey, I can get them to interbreed. Yes, I can. And I produce a mule. But the mule is infertile. It cannot reproduce. So it has to be both conditions to be the same species. They must be able to interbreed and they must be able to produce fertile offspring. If you go through what I did here, it doesn't matter what animal you're looking at. This is where your marks is. That's your seven marks. So I'm going to go through this again because you will get this in the exam. Okay? It's been in every exam since 2016. Okay. The population is separated by a geographical barrier. In this case, you would have said by continental drift. Okay? They can no longer interbreed because they now on one sits here and one there, and you've got this barrier 
of water or a mountain or something, this geographical barrier in between. So there is no gene flow. There aren't genes being swapped. They're exposed to different environmental conditions. And because of that, natural selection occurs independently in each population. Because one population has one set of environmental conditions and the other one has another one. So because of this natural selection, they become genotypically and phenotypically different over time. Doesn't happen overnight, it's over time. Okay, when they mix again, they're unable to interbreed and therefore produce live offspring, which means they are now different species. People, that's where your marks are, all right? That's where you're going to get your marks. So camels, horses, flightless birds, tortoises, whatever, that's your answer. You must learn this off by heart, okay? Righty.